Let's say you've got an app running. I don't have one on my device just yet, so I won't be able to show you completely. Let's say you've got an app running on your device. Um, you want the app running, but you don't want Visual Studio to be debugging it. So if you, if you run your app through Visual Studio, usually there's a little red stop sign, right? that says stop the debugging connection between Visual Studio and the device. So make, your, make sure your app is running on the device, but make sure it's stopped in Visual Studio. If you don't stop that, then Chrome can't interface with it because the Visual Studio is taking preference or precedence. So let's say you've got your, your device and it's running. Go ahead and open up Google Chrome, just all by itself, Google Chrome. Don't simulate. Just open Google Chrome all by itself. Wherever it goes to here, OK, the college's website, fine. Just press F12 to open the Chrome Dev Tools as usual. And so we get the console in Chrome. That's what we've usually worked with. And here in this three dots menu, the Dev Tools customization and options, Click on that three dots menu. Not the one by the star, but the one by the X, which appears when you press F12. You have a bunch of options here, such as more tools. And here we have remote devices. So if the device is an Android device, and if it's compatible, I believe it needs to be Android 4.4 and up, we will be able to interface with Google Chrome to the device. So if you've got an Android 4.2 or a 3. Point whatever, this probably won't work. OK, so mine finally came up here. Let me, let me do that. So I'm, I'm running something on my device, but I'm not going to have the connection in Visual Studio. And here in Chrome, more tools, remote devices. This uh, settings, and it says devices connected my particular model of Android device that is compatible. If I click on that, this is my Moto E2, e whatever it is, internal name XT1528. That's what's connected. I've currently got my app, com.smithy.cbdb. I'm looking at this particular screen right here, the index. I have inspect. If you see a device and you see an app running right there, you can try to inspect. That'll open another window. Well, now it's showing me what's on my device, plus Chrome output. So as I do stuff here, sign up, it shows up there too. And if the device is compatible, you can also control it on the screen here. So. I'll run through those steps one more time in a moment, but here I am creating an account in my app. Notice it's not perfect because here half my screen is cut off because bottom half is the keyboard. So the keyboard, imagine the keyboard right here. And then I press the join. I'm getting my output right there. Log in. <coughs> So I don't get the on-screen keyboard in Chrome. I still have to use it here. So I'm running my device, and I'm getting the output very similar what I would get out of a simulation out of the web browser. <coughs> Question? So when I went in, my house completely frozen. Completely froze, OK. What, sometimes what happens there is you just have to make sure a Visual Studio is not, is not debugging the app at the moment. They're both trying to fight for that access. Um, that's one thing, possibly. Uh, another thing might be bad luck at the moment. For whatever reason, it just decided to crash. So uh, just try to, is it completely frozen? 
Okay, I'll be there one moment. So uh, everyone uh, should try that. Uh, let me just back up one more time. Just open up Chrome on any website, F12, to bring your dev tools in that three dots menu on the top right, more tools, remote devices. So if your device is compatible, it might show up on that menu. And you click inspect. <coughs> All right, so did everyone get that? Do you see your device? Now, the reason this works, like I said, our app is in debug mode. If you try to do this on a real app, like I'm going to load up right here. I, I've, got a, I've got Instagram. If I load Instagram, it's not going to show up as, an, as a valid running device. So here's Instagram. But this says it's running my CBDB app. So Instagram app is not in debug mode. They've published it, and it's in published mode, and it's in the App Store, and therefore it's not compatible with this. But obviously, as we're, as we're testing, oh, look, I got another thumbs up. Cool. So as we're, 
uh, using and debugging our project in debug mode, this might be very useful for us to see what is it doing behind the scenes. We've been using the simulator, and it's very close. Well, we can use the actual uh, device itself if we want to see what is it doing also. So I'm back on, on CBDB, and it has the focus, and I can go in here and do all of this. So the point that I bring it up here is this is another perspective to look at for debugging. You see here my output shows I created an account, the user didn't exist, I logged in. You get that output in Visual Studio, and you get that output when you simulate. This is just another way to look at it. What's also useful here is, well, if we were simulating from Visual Studio, remember in the, in the Chrome simulator, we could go look at a certain screen to see what pouch has saved. And we, can go to a, we could go to a certain screen to see what local storage looks like. Well, that is also happening on the device. And with Chrome DevTools inspecting your <coughs> device, we also have that. We have application. If we look at application here, we'll see what your device's uh, database or local storage is, is up to. You see here, on my device, I've created v at v.com to sign in. And on my device, I have local storage with that account logged in, v at v.com. So we have the console output. We have the application uh, viewer, the storage viewer. So this is useful here. If I'm trying to go to save comic, and we've seen this bug. I'm going to save a comic the first time. So I'm here to save a comic. Spider-Man number one, 1963. I won't worry about the barcode or anything else. I'll just click Save. Well, this is the bug that we're seeing here. The very first time we're trying to save a comic, Uncaught type error cannot read property put of undefined. So this is, if I track this down on line 283, it says, well, I don't know what dot put means, which is all about pouch DB. So the issue is that we haven't technically initialized the database this first time that we create an account. If we quit the app and run it again, we have a user which then initializes the database. And that's why the second time we run it, we can save a comic. So we're missing a part here about if we create a user the first time, let's initialize the database. So I'm going to close this and go back to Visual Studio. You also see that um, error in simulation when you're looking at yeah. the ground. Yeah. So here under uh, Visual Studio, let's go to our index.js. Let's go, let's go find our initDB function. Mine's at about line 40 or so. Go ahead and find your initDB. And this is something we, we did early on. Eventually, we kind of got in the habit, didn't we, of when we made a new function, we also put a little console output that said function login is running or function uh, barcode is running. We, we didn't do that here. We assumed this is going to work. Well, what did it say about assuming? So we should have here this console output here as well, a little bit of output that says initDB is running. So. Um, let's do that first, then we'll fix the issue. I'm going to say here console log. Inside of our init db, we'll add init db is running. So if the debugger or the development tools are not giving me any useful output. I can give myself useful output anytime I want with console.log. That's one of the big uses for it. 
I expect that at a certain point, init db is working. Well, I never had any console output for myself to verify that. So then we're beating ourselves, our head against the wall, like, what's happening? I, where do I even start to debug this? So by adding this, whenever there is an initialization of, initialization of the database, I'll get that output. Uh, I'm going to show here, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to do this where I'm going to run this on my device again. And um, this won't appear yet. It won't say initialize database. I'm going to go to my device and completely delete the pouch database and complete the and delete the user. Uh, we do that in the Chrome Dev tool. So I'm going to do that for full debugging, for full testing. Uh, if you'd like to do it also, you can do it here. I just have to restart this because I need to Visual Studio didn't see my device plugged in. So when I run this on my device, I'll open up the Chrome Dev Tools to inspect my device, to delete my pouch database, and to delete my local storage. So I start it clean, which I suppose would be the same as if I just uninstall the app. But I'll show that, that it's useful to sometimes, instead of deleting the whole app, we need to clean out the data inside. So as I said before, you run it, you let it load up on the device, you then cut the connection between Visual Studio and the device, then I'll open up Chrome, F12, Remote Devices. Well, every, every angle, every bit of feedback that you can get is great. So I haven't kind of sat it side by side to see the difference. Um, but you know, any output that you get is, is good for helping yeah. to, I'd do like to do it. All right, so let me give this a shot. I'm going to do remote devices. It sees my connected device. I'm going to inspect it. It automatically logged me in because, yeah, that account exists. Before I delete my data, initDB is running. OK, well, let me delete the data inside the app. So application, index DB. There's the pouch database. I can delete the database. As for local storage, I'll just delete all of that, close that, and rerun it out of Visual Studio. So that's going to uh, put, the, uh, put the app back on the device. I cleaned out all of the data that I had created a moment ago. This is just to show that there should not be any output in the console that says initDB. The very first time the app is installed, the very first time the app runs, there was never any initialization of the database. So the, the, the fix for that is that we need to um, include, or we need to run that initDB um, in another spot. So you see, it's not just you guys that it doesn't work flawlessly. I have to also mess with it sometimes. So here it's saying it can't deploy to the device. OK, I'm going to switch to the simulator, switch back to the device. That'll probably wake it up. If not, I'll restart Visual Studio. That'll probably wake it up. If not that, I'll restart the computer. That'll probably wake it up. 
So just sometimes, sometimes you just redo it, and then the second time it obeys. So we'll get to it in a moment. But basically, we need to also call init db after we successfully created a user. See if you can find the line where that happens, and we'll do it in a moment. But after we create a user the first time, we also have to init db. That's the big issue why the very first time when we set ourselves up here, we can't save in a comic until we rerun it when we have a user. And so I knew the first time, well, I knew that it was supposed to run because this project has worked before. But it was that since we've got, you know, 700 lines of JavaScript, it's easy to miss one line. And it literally is that. One line is missing for, for that little bug. So, okay, it's running on my device. I'm going to cut the debugging from Visual Studio. I'm going to go back to my, I'm going to go back to Chrome. Got a device and an app running. I'll inspect. Okay, so this is what I'm showing. The very first time that I install the app clean it does not say init db, and there's no users. So I'm going to sign up with a brand new user. X at x.com password join sign. Sign in with the brand new user, x at x.com, new password, go. I'm in the app. It doesn't say anywhere here. Init db is running. So there is no database initialized at no point. After creating this brand new user is when we should initialize. So now if I try to save a comic, there's no database to save to. So it'll say dot put what's dot put because we haven't initialized the database it is capturing the data but then it can't put it into the database it's undefined inside of <coughs> line 284 we cannot put into the database so here's our fix back to the code where we create the user. So function where we create the user function sign up. Function sign up. Okay, function sign up starts at about line 65. We've got our, our first if. Um, if our passwords match, or if they don't match. Ultimately, it drills down to to a point over here where where the password uh, does match and we we move from the home screen passwords do match uh, user does not exist user saved etc right here we also need to Just a moment. No, that's under sign up. Oh, sorry, login. Not sign up, login. We're logging in with that user. It doesn't matter uh, when the user is, it doesn't matter that it's the, that when it's the user is created, it matters when the user logs in. Because that's the user's name and email that is tied to the database. So it's in function login. 
each time they're what they log in, you're going to initialize the database? It's a bit of a misnomer. It's not that we're creating a brand new database. PouchDB uses the same operation to create a new database as to connect to an existing database. So here we're saying, uh, right over here, if they're logged in, so line 138, inside of the if else of the user does exist. So in function, in function, function login, we have the second if else user does exist. Are the passwords the same or not? In the block of yes, they're the same. We have on line 30, 135, let's move us over to PG Home. Let's set our local storage who is logged in v at v.com. Well, right after this, we need to do two things, which I had here in my notes, which I forgot to add. This is where we do function, or we, this is where we do init db. This is to connect to the existing database. The first time we do init db, it's to create the database. Subsequent times are to connect to the existing database. So either either create the database or connect to the existing database. Nope, it's pretty much smart enough. Uh, Pouch is set up in that way that it's pretty much smart enough to know which of the two it needs to do. Now, what we are passing in is in the initDB function itself. So here we're saying connect to it or create it. And secondly, we need to also function show comics prep. This fixes another bug that you might have noticed. When we were saving data, when we were saving comics to the database, did any of you try to fully beta test it as in logging out and then creating another account and logging in? You might have seen, hey, I'm seeing the comics from that other person. Well, what's happening there is what I've said before. Behind the scenes, something's happening. But to the user, nothing happens unless we explicitly do something. So behind the scenes, yes, it was switching from user to user with their own database, with their own comics. But that table never refreshed to show v at v.com is logged in, so show Spider-Man. j at j.com uh, is logged in, so show Superman. It was never reinitializing the database, uh, reinitializing the table. The, the, the database was switching, so to speak, between users, but we weren't refreshing the table. So also, question, Michael? Yes, function show, sorry, yes. Function show prep table. And this is um, show the table of comics of the logged in user. Function show comics prep. This is ultimately what was missing, uh, calling the initialization function. That's what was causing that bug originally, that we couldn't save a comic until the second time. Because if you further look at where else do we initialize, you know, if you select initDB, control F, it'll give you instances over here throughout your code where initDB is found in the code. So it's found first in the area where the whole function itself is defined, function init db. 
Here's the part about connecting to the database. Uh, so PouchDB is set up that it knows to either create or connect to a database based on the current user, which is based on the on the local storage. So there's initDB there. We've got this part about are we logged in or not. No users logged in, so no database is initialized, or else user is logged in, so we initialize the database. That's why the second time we run the app, we have created a user, we have logged in, we hit this else, so initialize, connect to the database, and let's save a comic. We didn't have any initialization when we created the user. That's what this line is down here now. And at the very end, or near the end over here, we've got another instance where we reinitialize. Before I get to it, does anyone remember? When, did we, when else did we reinitialize the database? After you delete it, exactly. When you delete the whole database right here. Function delete collection. We have it here too. Reinitialize the database to start saving data again. So we were missing the one right here. Log in with a u or create a user and log in. Initialize the database. That's why we had to restart the app to get it to work. And if you were beta testing it even more about, I'm seeing the comics from someone else. Well, that's because also at the moment that we sign in, let's show the database of comics um, what they have saved, what that particular user has saved. So I'm going to run this on my device. I'm going to open it up in uh, Chrome Dev Tools just to see that other perspective of it again. And uh, it should work. It should work as advertised. All right, so here I'm running it. Uh, I deleted the data of Pouch again. I deleted the local storage data. I cleaned all of that out. It's, there's no user set up yet and all of that. So I'm running it off of my device, and then it's just got the ready to rock part that happens right after uh, on device ready for Cordova. I've got the no user is logged in, so local storage has not been initialized with any user yet. Nothing saved. So I'll create another account. This time I will do. Uh, b at b.com with my great password join so my output there is saying okay b user b password whatever I'm gonna sign in b at b.com with the password this is saying right here passwords match user exists we signed in initialization of the database happened then I go directly to save a comic. I'll save a comic. Spot number three from 1993 and click save. Comic saved. So I'm not getting that error anymore because the because dot put 
works now. There is a database to save to. Okay, to test it even more. When I go to view comics, I have one comic. I'm going to go to my options menu and log out. So I've logged out. I was logged in as b at b.com. I'm going to create a brand new user. Cat at cat.com. Passwords. Join. So I've got a brand new user, cat. So I'm saying I've just signed in with a brand new user. I see it listed down there. I go to view comics. Well, I have no comics yet. It's a new user. I'm going to save a comic. I'm going to save this comic, Dog Adventures, number 7, 1952. Just to be playing with this again also, I will do the barcode. Uh, tab is inactive because it can't show my barcode. But I just scan the barcode right there. It's our barcode. Save that. Comic is saved. Okay, so cat at cat.com has, has her list of comics. I'm going to log out. I have already user b at b.com. So I'm signing in back again with my original user. View comics, the spot comic. So B saved his comic spot number three, and Cat saved her comic, Dog Adventures number seven. So that was working before, but if you had tested it before, I would have seen when I logged into Cat, Cat's account, it would have said spot. And if I had saved a brand new comic with Cat, and I logged out and I went back to B, I would have seen Cat's comics. And that was because here, in addition to forgetting, forgetting about initializing the database, redraw the table. So internally it was working, but we never redrew the table. If you would have, re if you would have restarted the app, you would have seen Cat's comics if Cat was logged in, and you would have seen B's comics if B was logged in. But this initialization part tripped us up a little bit. No, we're doing it this way that we are associating it with a user because we have different profiles. But normally, no, you don't need to associate it with anything. You just create your app, start your database, and, and use it. But we need a, a database for one user and a database for another user, so we use their email as their unique identifier. All right, so let's pause there. Did everyone get that working? Do you see the initialization on the first time you log in? Do you see logging in, logging out, and different people have different databases? Anyone need a little help?